This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1970-73 Carryover League. We are getting our final matchup of the postseason to determine the last wild card team and be in the American League. It's a series between the Minnesota Twins and the Texas Rangers. Let's uh, go right into this without hesitation and see what the needs would be for these two squads. It's an even Steven. Uh, the Twins are a game ahead of the Rangers, uh, actually a half a game, excuse me, half a game ahead of the Rangers, so a simple best of three, winner of the best of three is going to the playoffs, and the loser is out, simple as that. The Milwaukee Brewers are already in at four games over 500, so there's no way that both the Rangers and Twins could both make the playoffs. So the series opens in Minnesota in a back and forth series schedule. What happened in Minnesota? Game number one, Big Game Bob Johnson for the Texas Rangers, formerly Big Game Bob Johnson of the Kansas City Royals a few years ago. Uh, this guy's 1970 card just pitches really well, and he got the start in game one. And Tom Murphy would get the start for the Twins. Murphy's had an okay year, though Murphy, astonishingly, threw a no-hitter earlier this year in a bizarre but wonderful moment for him. So that is your matchup. Now in the bottom of the first, an error by Dave Nelson, not a good fielding infielder for the Rangers. After an out and a couple walks, Jim Holt gets a hold of one off the Bob Johnson card, rolls a 6-4, one swing, grand slam, four runs off of Bob Johnson, who is stunned and a little bit miffed that his infielder made an error to extend this inning. So that was an unearned run. Unfortunately, not four unearned runs, just one unearned runs. That would be all Bob Johnson would give up. But Tom Murphy, my goodness, uh, perfect through the top of the fourth, a one-hitter through seven innings. And then with that in uh, happening, they have Paranowski, Williams, and Riker, the three-headed monster in the bullpen who has made up most of the victories and saves for the Twins this year as their starting rotation has been kind of meh, but these guys have been amazing. Murphy gets up a couple singles, and quickly, we don't care that you got a shutout, dude. You're coming out. Paranowski comes in, gets a couple guys out. Stan Williams comes in, gets up a walk and a two-run single, but he gets the final out of that inning. And then in the ninth inning, Pete Reichert comes in the game to get the save. So each of the twin relievers only goes two-thirds of an inning, to keep them fresh. That's, that's been the uh, motive all year. Use all three guys, keep them fresh. Don't let them go like two and two thirds or three and two thirds innings. You can use them every day. That's the strategy the Twins are using and it's worked perfectly thanks to a Jim Holt grand slam in the first inning. Last we heard of Jim Holt, he was hitting walk-off homers in the previous series against Ohio players in games the Twins would lose, but my goodness, Jim Holt has got some big home runs this year for the Twins. So, the series goes to Texas for a game two. They must win at home here in Arlington, Texas. Your Washington Rangers, your Texas Senators, whatever you wish to call them during this timeline. And the Twins will send Jim Kitty Cott, his wonderful 1970 two card 10 and 2 with a 207 ERA and the Rangers have a nice little lefty his name is Mike Paul no slouch in his own 72 he had a 217 ERA in 162 innings you could say he pitched more and pitched better than Cott both cards are pretty similar Cott's a little bit better he's a starter 8 Paul's a starter 7 expect a nice pitching game today between the Rangers and Twins 
from Arlington. This is the Ranger season. They do not win. Leading off for the Twins, it'll be Cleo James. 39 is a base hit. Batting second today is Chico Cardenas. He's normally batting sixth or seventh, but the Twins wanted to spice up their lineup against lefties and move Cardenas up there. So they're going to let him swing away this first time. 2-7 is a ground ball double play plus, which is a base hit because they're holding Cleo James on. So he hits it through the hole. The perfect strategy for the Twins worked. And you got runners on the corners for Rod Carew. 62, first C. Now you've got runners at second and third. And it'll be Harmon Killebrew. 111 is a walk. The bases are loaded, just like they were in the first inning. It's going to be Tony Oliva. 48 off Mike, Mike Paul's single one to nine. It's a base hit on a seven. And the Twins get the first run of the game. Base is still loaded, one out for Larry Heisel. Heisel, 511. Second X, but not a good defensive player. Elliott Maddox, a 40 41. They need an out. A double play would be great, but just get your glove on the get your glove on the ball, Elliot. And he cannot. It is an error on the E41 second baseman. Oh boy, this is what we feared with the Rangers. The Twins, you know, they don't make as many mistakes. They did go to the playoffs in uh, 69 and 70 before they fell down in 71 to the Oakland team. Base is still loaded, one out, and here is Jim Holt, the hero of Game One. 5'11 off of Paul is a strikeout. And with two outs, it's George Mitterwald. 38 is a K. 2 nothing. Twins get a couple gift runs there. and um, But, the, you know, the Rangers uh, minimize the damage by leaving the bases loaded. So Jim Cott is going to have to make two runs stand up. Toby Hera, 47 off Cott is single one to 13. And a 14 is rolled. We saw this a lot in game one. The Rangers got a lot of hit chance outs and missed most of them. So they're a little snake bit thus far in this series. It has to turn around or they're going to go home quietly. 4-7, single one to 13, rolls a 14 and he's out. And here is Dave Nelson, 59, sky's the center. And Jeff Burrows, 6-10, a bouncer to third. This is going to be Rick Rennick, a 4-6 at third baseman. When he gets to the ball, he gobbles it up, and he got to that one and makes the play. Doesn't make any errors whatsoever, but he's a hard time finding where the ball is. We go to the second inning, and here is the hero, Rick Rennick, of that ground ball. 56 is a strikeout. Cleo James, 1-3, bounce to short, and Chico Cardenas, 36, single one of six. He gets a base hit on the five, so Chico Cardenas is living a charmed life batting second today. And here's Rod Carew, 5'10", catcher's card. Dick Billings, a 3'16", and he gets a pass ball foul out. Bottom of two, it'll be Frank Howard, 58, sky's the center. Merv Rittman, 67 is a K, and with two outs, it's Mike Epstein. Murderer's Row of the Twins, 67's a K. Burroughs, Howard, Rittman, and Epstein, my goodness. Yeah, you can see why the Rangers are uh, game away from the playoffs. This is a really good team. We go to the third, and here's Killebrew. 2-8, double one or three is a base hit. Tony Oliva, 1-3, pops to third. Larry Heisel, 4-4, four, four, off the Paul card, no homer. Triple, one to five, double, hits the double. Killebrew ends up at third. Second and third, one out, Jim Holt. Down a couple. They're going to bring an infield up. They don't want to give up an easy run on the ground ball. 68, it's a sack fly to right field. Jim Holt comes through again. Runner at second, two outs. George Mitterwald, 56 is a K. Three nothing twins, they are a front runner. They had the lead early in game one. The Rangers stormed back in the late innings and fell short. Looks like the same kind of game happening. Do the Rangers have a comeback in them? It'll be Billy Canigliero, one three, pops the second. Elliot Maddox, 53, rolls to the mound. And Dick Billings, 36, is a K. And Cod is perfect. Through the first nine. We go to the fourth, and here is Rick Rennick. 38, double one to 12 is a double. 
Cleo James, 1-6 for Cleo. Let's take a look at the Cleo James card acquired in the offseason in a trade. He was a Chicago Cub in 71, mostly as a uh, pinch hitter, but also a rotating uh, outfielder. Could play a little bit of third base, backing up uh, if needed. Really hits lefties rather well here. 1-6, single one to 11, and he gets a base hit. He's the B stealer, pretty much the only speed on this team. Larry Heisel is also a B. Everybody else is a D or an E. So you have runners on the corners, and it's Chico Cardenas, who's had a nice day, two for two. With nobody out, I think the Rangers are going to play it back. They don't want to give up another one of those plus singles like they did in the first inning. So Chico Cardenas, 5'11", second X. Second baseman is Elliot Maddox, a 4E41. Oh, boy. He's a 4. E41. A GBC. Well, that worked. A run will score, and a runner moves a second, and it's 4 zip. Rod Carew. Two sevens a K. With two outs, it's Harmon Killebrew. Two four skies to center field. Four nothing twins, just like in game one. It'll be Toby Harrow leading off in the fourth. Three tens a walk. They have a base runner. He's a B stealer. Don't think he'll do anything tricky. Mitterwald has a nice arm, and you're down four runs. Dave Nelson, 46 off a cot, is double one to eight, a base hit, and the runner goes to third. The Rangers are cooking here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners on the corners with nobody out. Nelson has got speed. They both have speed. So the Twins will actually bring the infield up, since they're holding anyway. For Jeff Burroughs, 57 is a K. Still up and holding for Frank Howard with a four nothing lead. One four is center B question mark. And they'll try and score Toby Hara, a 15 runner, 16 17, minus one arm in center field, makes it on a 16. And he rolls a 20 and is thrown out at the plate. Oh my. More misfortune for the Rangers, trying to make it a three run game. And it blew up. A 9 9, an 8 8 2 double play as Toby Hara gets thrown out at the plate. He's a 15 runner and a 20 was rolled. That is a shame. And the inning is over. This is not going the Rangers' way this whole series. We go to the fifth. It's Tony Oliva. 2-7 is a K. Larry Heisel, 2-4. Center. And Jim Holt. 3-6. Let's take a look. I haven't looked at a card yet, I don't think. Jim Holt. Let's look at this guy's card. He has had some monster hits in the postseason. None could be bigger than this one. 3-6, homer, 1-19, double. It is gone. That's at least four homers I can think of in the last week this guy's hit. And it's now 5 nothing twins. And they're starting to feel it here, folks. George Mitterwald, 2-4, center. They lost some distance with the White Sox and cannot close it to win the division. The White Sox have won this division. The Twins were hoping the White Sox would falter a little bit and fall into the wild card and the Twins would get the division. It may turn out that the Twins and White Sox will meet in the playoffs in the wild card round. Still to be determined. All right, five to nothing, bottom of the fifth. It'll be Merv Rettman leading it off. 37, there's a sky to left field. Mike Epstein, 35 as a walk. Billy Canigliaro. 49 off the cot card is short X. The reliable Chico Cardenas is a 2E12. Rangers need a miracle here. A 2 ground ball B. Oh, they got a partial miracle. No double play at least. And with two outs, it's Elliot Maddox has really had a day in the field trying to field ground balls. A pitch to Elliot. 412 pops to third base. 5 to nothing in the sixth inning. It'll be Rick Rennick. 2 6 center. Cleo James, 2-10, center. And with two outs, Chico Cardenas, 2-9, grounds to short. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, the bottom of the sixth of a 5 nothing game. Awful quiet in Texas. They need a spark. They've had some bad luck in this series and missed opportunities and don't have a lot to show for it. Very disappointing showing thus far. It'll be Dick Billings leading off in the bottom of the sixth. 48, second X. 
this is Carew, a 3E37. Not a very good fielder at this point of his career, but he makes the play. Toby Hara leads off against lefties, 46. And he hits the cot card for a double 108 base hit, and speed is on for Dave Nelson being held on. 2-8, let's take a look at the Dave Nelson car. Nice little 1971 Washington Senator with a 280 batting average. Ace dealer, 1-17 runner. Handles about well, bunts, hits, and runs, but his fielding is not very good, and that really hurts the Rangers, along with guys like Elliot Maddox, Jeff Burroughs in left field. They just don't have good defense. They just really aren't a contender, to be quite honest, during this timeline, and they're just trying to they're trying to wing it, fix it on the fly here. But Dave Nelson, 2-8, is single dot dot, and here come the Rangers again, just like in the fourth. Runners on the corners with one out. They're going to bring the infield up again and hold, which is an unusual strategy with a 5 nothing lead. But here's the pitch to Burroughs. 2-10, sky to left, B question mark. Oh, boy. Do you want to cut it to within a grand slam? We did it last time. Toby Hara, and he got thrown out of the plate. Again, he's a 15, 16, 17, but Heisel's got a plus arm and he's going to be safe. Toby, uh, Larry Heisel with a plus four arm. So now you got a 5 1 game and you got Big Frank Howard up. Let's take a look at Big Frank Howard. Uh, his, this 19, we had his 1969 card for like four years. Bumped up to his 70 card for this season and then we'll have to say goodbye to this card and introduce either a 71 or 72 Howard card, or maybe even trade him, as his 40-plus uh, homer years uh, will end with this card. No bigger moment than now for Frank and his Rangers, Senators. The pitch to Frank Howard. 5'11", off of Cott, is Pitcher X. Now, in a very strange situation, Jim Cott, normally a gold glove pitcher, is an E25 for some reason. So the E25 cot gets a GBC. Well, that's not bad. So that'll put a, move the runner to second with two outs for Merv Rettman. 2-5 is a K to Rettman. Another failure for the Rangers. They've had their chances. They've blown them. We'll go to the seventh inning. Mike Paul has uh, been uneven. They all go to the pen and go with Frank Lindsay here. Frank Lindsay will come on in the seventh out of the Ranger bullpen. Rangers have an outside chance of also getting the Commissioner Award for roster participation. They're close, closely matched with the Toronto Blue Jays in that department. We'll find out more at the end of the video. So it'll be Frank Lindsay against Rod Carew in the seventh. 4-10 is the fly to left. Killebrew, 58. Sky to right, and with two outs, it's Tony Oliva. 4-12, flies to right. Frank Lindsay slams the door on the Twins in the top of the seventh inning. Stretch time in Arlington, Texas. We have the hometown kids, ZZ Top, with their 75 L 76 LP, Teos. Wonderful record. One of my favorite Frank records, the drummer. He's got some really cool drum licks on this one. Anyway. Good stuff coming out of Texas with ZZ Top. Bottom of the seventh, Jim Cott with a four-run lead facing Mike Epstein. 1-3 is a bouncer to short. Billy Canigliero, 1-10, flies the center. And with two outs, Elliot Maddox, 59, center C. And once again, the Twins are in that area with just six outs to get with this monster bullpen, but Jim Cott is having an outstanding game himself. We go to the eighth. Lindsay will come out after one, and they'll go to Riddleburger in the eighth. Kenny Riddleburger against Larry Heisel in the eighth inning. 4-11, first seed. Jim Holt. 57 is a K, and with two outs, Mitterwald. 1-7 is single, 1-12, to 12. he gets it. And with two outs, it'll be Rick Rennick. 59, bounce it a short. This is Toby Hara, a 3-38 at short, and he makes the play. Bottom of the eighth, Rangers 
trying to make some noise, trying to get the fans into it. They have six outs and their season left. They need four runs, just like they did in game one. They were down four nothing in that one. They got two in the eighth. They're gonna have to do it the hard way. With Dick Billings leading off in the bottom of the ninth. Karanowski and Williams are ready if needed. Dick Billings, here's the pitch. 46 off the cot card, double 108 is a base hit. And now you got Toby Hara, and they're not hesitating. That's it. Didn't get a guy out in the eighth, Jim Cotts, you're gone. And you're a starter eight, but you're being pulled with a 5-1 lead. It'll be Stan Williams coming in. In the eighth inning, Stan Williams against Toby Hara. The pitch to Toby Hara. 1-6 is a pop to first. Dave Nelson. 2-2 is a ground ball, third A++ plus plus injury. And that is a disaster for the Rangers. Oh, tough break there. Tough break there, and uh, oh, he looks like he's hurt. Yep. Uh, Nelson's limp in there down the first baseline. Must have pulled something. Ground ball, third A++ plus plus injury. And... That means that they have to bring in a new Maddox who can play third, and Bernie Allen will play second in Nelson's spot. But critical double play, and we got a 5 1 game in the ninth. Cleo James. 45. Off of the Riddleberger card, Homer 1 to 12, double, and that is a home run for Cleo James. It is 6 to 1. Chico Cardenas, 49, up base hit. Rod Carew, 35, up base hit, dot, dot, and that's going to do it for Riddleberger, and unfortunately, it's just not in the cards, it seems, for the Texas Rangers. They're a little overmatched. The Twins have finally got it rolling. They seem to be stuck in, stuck between gears when they played the White Sox and couldn't get any traction and lost four out of seven twice. But since then, the Twins have been playing uh, winning baseball, and it looks like they're going to the playoffs. Gugalusi will come on in the ninth with runners on the corners uh, for Harmon Killebrew. 2-6 is a ground ball, double play, runner scores from third. And with two outs, it's Tony Oliva, 3-10, single. Larry Heisel, 55, second C. It is 7-1. As we go to the ninth inning, you got three straight righties, so Stan Williams is gonna try and get a two inning save. They all have some time off before the wild card game, so they don't mind uh, Williams going two innings if he has to, uh, because this was a uh, three game series and they had a day off after that before the playoffs begins, so there you go. Jeff Burrows, 66, skies to right. Frank Howard. 48 is a K and with two outs. It's Merv Retman. Let's take a look at the Retman card as this, this card will expire. They snuck him away from the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles certainly missed them as they're out of the playoffs. The Rangers knocked them out. This could be the end of Retman in Texas as well. The pitch to Merv Retman. 1 4 is a sky to center field. Just didn't have it. You know, just did not have it. It was the Twins outscored him 11 3 in two games, and the Twins are just a much better baseball team. And it showed. No miracle today for the Rangers. Congratulations, Minnesota Twins, for taking care of business. Two straight wins, a Stan Williams save, struck out a batter, seven solid innings for Cott, helped by some double plays. Four hits, just the one run in the sixth, two walks and five strikeouts. Gugalewski in the ninth, give up a hit. Riddleberger. Uh, four hits, two runs and a K. Frank Lindsay was three up and three down. Mike Paul, it's not good enough. Give up nine hits and five runs. His defense hurt him. The defense hurt the Rangers a lot. Four runs were earned. A walk, six strikeouts. 1019, 0109. 714-14. 1, 7, 2, 6, 2, 6, 1, 7. And game two. The Twins missed out on the playoffs last year, edged out narrowly by the Kansas City Royals, and with the Royals failing this year, the Twins get in. 
though the Milwaukee Brewers and the White Sox do as well. All three teams ahead of Kansas City in this division are in the playoffs. They make up half of the playoffs in the American League. That is something no one saw coming. The three Midwest teams plus Cleveland, Boston, and Oakland. That's your American League. Ugh. That's your American League playoff field. Clearly a step beneath the National League playoff field. The Rangers finished the year game under 500. They're 20 and 21. And they lost out on the Commissioner Award to the top Toronto Blue Jays. Which is, seems fair because Toronto finished at 21 and 21 too. Rangers at 250 with a 434 ERA. Um, the big guns, Epstein and Howard, again, did the damage. Not in the in this series with the Twins. Prior to that, though, they had 13 of 14 home runs. Big game Bob Johnson was 6 and 4 with three complete games. The bullpen, Paul Lindblad had three losses and an ERA over five, which is going to kill a young team like the Rangers. Leading hitter could have been Merv Redman, 60 for 164. He was hitting 400 at the All-Star break and finishes at 366. He's probably your team MVP. And for your Twins, a nice finish after the disappointment against the White Sox. They finished 24 and 20, just a half game behind the Chai Sox. Twins are hitting 262 with a 391 ERA. But I want to caution that the twin rotation, Jim Cott got the win in that game, and he's the only pitcher with a winning record uh, of the starting staff. Bly Levin, Tom Murphy, Jim Cott, and Dave Goltz. The twin bullpen is a staggering 11-3 with 12 saves. That is how the twins win. <laughs> Paranowski, Williams, and Reichert. And frankly, they're not even being that overworked, really. 23, 25, and 25 innings. None of the pitchers have an ERA over three. Pretty good stuff from the Twins. Uh, you got Jim, uh, excuse me, Harmon Killebrew with 12 homer and 36 RBI. He'll be probably on some MVP lists, but I think he's gonna fall short. And Jim Holt, that burst of power. My goodness, five homers for the year. We saw four of them in the last week. 27 RBI. Mr. Carew did get 71 hits. Probably leads the American League in hits. And hit 378. So he hit with a better average than a Merv Redman that we saw. 24-20 for the Twins. And 20-21. And for the Rangers. We can fill out the final box here of this best of three. Minnesota wins at 2-0. Minnesota is 24 and 20. And Texas is 20 and 21. So that's going to be 0, minus 1, 0, 0. And in the in the math, Minnesota, Milwaukee the importance here is that head-to-head -head earlier this year, the Twins swept the Brewers. So with each team four games over 500, it means the Twins do get the five spot. Let's take a look at the... Uh, we'll do a sort of the uh, Midwest for these teams. And the Twins will edge the, Bre and the, twins will edge the uh, Brewers for second place in this division. And that's going to be interesting as far as the matchups. The overall standings, the White Sox you see, they still hold on to this three spot, five over 500. They lose out on a two spot to Boston because of a tiebreaker, but they're half a game ahead of the Twins and Brewers, so they get that division narrowly. Uh, twins uh, tied with the Brewers, but again, they win the tiebreaker, head-to-head head, head head record. So the Twins become the five, and the Brewers become the six. And when we plug in the wild card results in the tournament in the American League, the final boxes be plugged in. 
V6 is the Brewers. They are 4 over 500. And the Twins are the 5 at 4 over 500. So, it will actually be the Milwaukee Brewers playing the White Sox in the wild card round instead of the Twins. The Twins got to feel relieved to not have to deal with these White Sox again because they lost two best of sevens to them. Milwaukee Brewers against the White Sox. I guess the White Sox would probably be happy with that, figuring that the Twins are probably a better team on paper. So this might be a good draw for the Chai Sox not to get the Twins for a third time. What's that old adage? It's, it's so hard to beat a, to a team three times in one season. The Twins, though, will go to Cleveland. And uh, they, on paper, again, the Twins are better than Cleveland, so it's a good draw for them. Uh, Cleveland, very fortunate to, in a very weird postseason, it was Cleveland that dumped on the Tigers five games to one to get into first place. But then both Cleveland and Detroit in the next round, Cleveland lost four straight to the White Sox, and Detroit lost four straight to Milwaukee. So Cleveland basically stayed at that same place they were when they dumped the Tigers. Just a game over 500. So there's your final four for the wild card spot. Your number six Brewers facing the White Sox, number three. Number five Twins against number four Cleveland. The National League, you have, this is not Houston, the number six Atlanta Braves are going to face the number three Houston Astros. And the Vegas team, uh, the division winner of the Mountain Time Zone, hosts the playoff series, but it's against the Dodgers. And the Dodgers will be a road, have the road advantage on that. With your number ones and twos down here, you can erase these. Your number ones and twos down here, getting buys. Your Mets at 14 over 500, Reds at 13 over 500, Oakland 9 over, and Boston 5 over. You can really see right here how much better the National League is over the American League. At the top of it, and uh, even in the, in the middle part of it. That's it tonight. Congratulations to the Minnesota Twins getting back to the playoffs. Um, very much alive with a World Series chance in a weak American League are the Twins. They are definitely, definitely have a hot chance of going all the way. Thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.